The fifth episode of The Dropout continues to map out Elizabeth Holmes, Amanda Seyfried, and Therano's journey as the company faces new challenges. With the deadline on the Walgreens contract around the corner, Elizabeth is forced to reflect on various important aspects of herself and her company. While Elizabeth contemplates giving up, Ian Gibbons finds himself in legal hot waters. The episode ends with Elizabeth continuing her journey, but making some questionable choices along the way. If you wish to catch up on the episode's events and seek insights about its ending, here's everything you need to know about the dropout episode 5. Episode 5 Recap Elizabeth has been concentrating on the aesthetics of the company, designing a wellness center and cute little finger puppets for kids, but has left the technology to her scientists. At the lab, Sunny despairs as another line of prototypes overheat and explode. This machine has rarely worked over the years, yet the pressures are building, time is most definitely running out. Meanwhile, Ian Gibbons, Stephen Fry, is dragged into the intense lawsuit between Richard Fuse, an amazingly unhinged William H. Macy, and his competing patent against Theranos. Stephen Fry is just brilliant as the wholesome chemist, who finds himself trapped within corporate greed and lawyer jargon. Richard spots Ian's name on all Theranos' patents and decides to get him involved, hoping he'll unearth some dark secrets about Elizabeth's suspicious company if he was to go to court. Ian frets over testifying, he wants justice, yet is also anxious about losing his job for a second time. The new creative team of director Francesca Gregorini, Killing Eve, and writer Liz Hanna, The Post and Mindenter, find some touching moments from this integral story. How does Theranos meet the deadline? In the episode, it is evident that Theranos hasn't reached a point where their technology can deliver on Elizabeth's promises. Moreover, with the deadline to fulfill the contract with Walgreens just around the corner, Theranos and Elizabeth are in a clutch. However, by the episode's end, Elizabeth figures out a solution to the problem. She decides to take Sonny's advice and has a different company's device with similar functioning remodeled as a Theranos device. She plans on presenting the device as phase one of the partnership with Walgreens. In the final moments of the episode, Elizabeth addresses her employees and gives a rousing speech. She overcomes her self-doubt and introduces the new Theranos logo. She also announces that the company will be launching its product in the Walgreens stores in the next 48 hours. Therefore, Elizabeth fulfills her promise and delivers the device. However, her methods are unethical and push Theranos further towards crumbling under its unsustainable model. Did Brendan Morris quit? Was he fired? Elizabeth hires Brendan Morris to lead a rival team of engineers and help fast-track the development of the Theranos device. He quickly wins over his peers and has a charming personality. Morris develops a strong rapport with Ian Gibbons, and the two are well aware that Theranos is in no position to meet the promises Elizabeth has been making. In the episode's final moments, we see Gibbons packing his stuff and leaving Theranos. However, it is never quite explained whether he quit or was fired. In the episode, Morris sends his colleagues an email that openly credits Gibbons for the patents owned by Theranos. Although he could have been fired for this action, it is more likely that he quit his job at Theranos. Morris is a vocal opposer of the idea to forge another company's tech. When Elizabeth decides to proceed with the same, Morris chooses to quit due to unethical work practices at Theranos. His statement to Tyler Schultz is evidence of his weariness with the company's policy. Therefore, it is highly likely that Morris quit his job after growing dissatisfied with Theranos. The ending, Flower of Life, involves many moving parts as the story fragments into many subsections. Elizabeth finds herself constantly in flight, moving from one meeting to another across the country, then off to a funeral. Her expressions are numb and distant looking, as that creeping instability quickly returns. One scene, in particular, hones in on this mentality, as Holmes appears deranged talking to a finger puppet dragon. The lawyers play dirty with the deposition, and fears over fraud are back in question. Five episodes in and this series continues to impress. Another great chapter in this tragic tale of business scandal, with some great performances and more absorbing writing. The filmmakers managed to mine humor and emotion from this biography, with so much more of the story still to unfold.